Hi there, welcome back to the XNA for Windows Phone tutorial. In episode 3 we're going to be extending the work we did in episode 2 by adding some new classes, cleaning things up a bit and then starting work on some more gameplay features. So let's jump right in. The first thing you'll notice is that I've simplified our update code a lot. Instead of modifying the lander's position and velocity vectors uh, directly from within the update code, like that code that used to live here, uh, I'm now delegating this work to methods on the lander class that I created. So accelerate and do movement. Let's go take a look at those. You can see they're not scary at all. Uh, here's accelerate and here's do movement. Accelerate just adds ac the acceleration to the velocity and in turn do movement adds the velocity to the position. Pretty straightforward. Note that both of these are, are doing a vector multiply, so we're scaling down each of these increments by uh, the elapsed time. So just as we talked about last time, um, we need to scale each of these things uh, according to how much time has passed since the last frame, so that if the frame rate changes, we don't start moving things faster or slower than they should be moving. The only other significant change I made was to create a gravity class, which you can see a local instance of here. So we're using this gravity get acceleration and passing it into accelerate on the lander object. If we take a look at the gravity class, you can see it has the concept of a strength value, and the get acceleration method just returns a new vector with the y component set to this strength. And if we actually run this, you'll see that uh, the, the effect is exactly the same as what we had before. So we have the lunar lander accelerating downwards, and if I click somewhere, it will move somewhere up, uh, to that position on the screen. Pretty straightforward. OK. So to pull all this knowledge together, we're going to go ahead and implement the lander's thruster in a similar fashion. You can see I've already created a thruster class for us to use. This is almost identical to the gravity class, except that I've added the concept of the force being active or inactive. So we have this boolean property for active. As you can see, when it's set to inactive, we return a zero magn magnitude acceleration vector in our get acceleration method. And it behaves similarly to the gravity when active except that the strength is negated, so you can see this minus sign here, and that's so that it moves in the opposite direction to gravity. You'll also notice that the strength, the default strength here, is significantly higher to make sure we can overcome gravity in a reasonable time period. So default strength for the thruster is 60, and default strength for the gravity is 15. Now let's pull it all together. If we come back into our game class, First we need to create a thruster object, so let's put it by the gravity object that I created earlier. Then in our initialize code we need to set it up, so thruster equals new thruster. And then we hook it up to our lander object in the update method. So right underneath the gravity we say lander dot accelerate and this time we want to say thruster.getAcceleration and we also pass in the elapsed game time. And finally we need to toggle whether or not the thruster is active. I'm going to use this using the touch input we've already set up here. So instead of uh, moving the lander we're going to set the thruster to be active. Um, note that touch location state dot pressed. This only happens in the first frame that the finger is pressed down. And then we also want to deactivate the thruster when the touch is released. So we say if touch dot state equals touch state location state dot released, then we set thruster dot active equals false. And just because we can, let's have a little bit of fun with this. So down in our draw code, I'm going to uh, add a new thing that says for the color, if thruster.active, then the color is going to be, let's find some nice shade of red. 
uh, orange red otherwise it's going to be white that's what this question mark and colon notation is by the way it, do it tests this value if this is true it uses the, fir uh, the second piece after the question mark and if this is false it uses the third piece so let's run this and see what it looks like as expected our lander is falling under gravity but now if I click it turns orange red and it shoots back upwards if I release it turns back to white and shoots off the screen <laughs> let's uh, run that again and I won't click for so long so if I click it shoots back up and I release and it uh, starts falling with gravity again pretty cool huh okay as one last piece I'm going to stop initializing our, <laughs> our lander in the top left corner and initialize it in the center top instead to do this we need to make a new constructor for our lander that accepts uh, a float actually let's do a vector position and this is going to call our original constructor and then set this dot position equals position and then we come back into game1.cs and for our lander uh, initialization we now pass a new vector and for the x coordinate we're going to say uh, graphics dot preferred back buffer width divided by 2 and for the y let's make it uh, 50 and now when we run the lander starts off in the center of the screen which is much nicer okay and that's all for today guys um, next time will be a little more exciting we'll start adding uh, some accelerometer control so determining which uh, way the screen is rotated and I'll show you this running on an actual phone which would be cool uh, make sure to check in for that next week and I'll catch you next time thanks